Encantada. It seemed like a regular hearing on Capitol Hill until this happened. Chairwoman, uh, I wanted to ask unanimous consent for representatives Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida and Barbara Lee of California, both senior members of the Committee on Appropriations, to participate in this hearing. Um, thank you for that request. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is more than welcome. Barbara Lee is not. The chairwoman of a House Foreign Affairs subcommittee, Maria Elvira Salazar, refused to hear from Barbara Lee, a leading black Democrat in Congress. The subject, Cuba. Barbara Lee has been friends with Fidel Castro. Sure. He's not a friend of the Cuban people that we are trying to liberate. I'm an African-American woman who has a point of view where in a democracy those point of views are allowed. And you are doing exactly what you say the Cuban government is by denying me the opportunity to present my point of view. What is wrong with this picture? I would love to have this same type of political discourse in Havana. Let's have it in Havana if we normalize relations and have normal diplomatic relations. Why don't you raise his autocratic we tendencies? Are about to start this Wasserman Schultz, a Democrat who supports sanctions like Salazar, walked out with Lee, even though she was welcome to stay. Inside the hearing, Lee's colleagues said her opinion on Cuba needed to be heard. That Barbara Lee is not a pawn or a puppet or part of a scheme of Cuba. Uh, she is a black woman who was just silenced. Another colleague read out Lee's statement. So this is a statement for the record by the Honorable Barbara Lee of California. And I'm outraged that Chair Salazar has taken the unprecedented step of objecting to me participating in this discussion. I've been working on United States policy towards Cuba for four decades. Lifting sanctions on Cuba has long been an uphill battle in Washington, even for members of Congress. Lee may have been silenced over her pro-engagement views, but calls to lift sanctions on Cuba from her colleagues were still loud. As President Obama recognized, the embargo on Cuba has not only failed to advance U.S. interests, but has had devastating humanitarian effects. U.S. policy toward Cuba seems perpetually stuck in the Cold War, had ho held hostage by those who are still in their feelings and who seemingly want to cripple the country entirely with little regard for whether it advances U.S. interests or increases the suffering of the Cuban people.